I am mad as hell and I am not going to take it anymore. Yeah, I kind of had to force that there, but I there's a rant coming. That's just the way it is. You know what this is about. Um, before I get to the rant, please subscribe. You know, press the button. That'd be great. <sighs> Come on. Let's do this. Why do we watch basketball? Maybe you like dunks. Maybe you like outside shooting. Maybe you like people mixing it up in the paint. Maybe you're a big fan of defense. Maybe you love seeing the changes in strategies, the flow, the drama. You know, actions that involve basketball happening on a court. What you don't watch it for is for the breaks, for the stoppages, for the endless irrelevant disruptions to the flow of play that we have had to endure ever since the Olympics began. What we're seeing with basketball on this continent the last couple of months has been utterly frustrating, annoying, and I've got to really be careful because if I swear this gets demonetized, but oh my everything, this sucks. This is awful. So for those of you tuning in, obviously our more US place viewers might be aware, we've got an issue where games are just taking too long from needless stoppages. Uh, so obviously we've enhanced, well that's the term they use, the replay system this year, but uh, the enhancements have not exactly aided things. And as a result, the stoppages in play and how long they take is just becoming infuriating. We had, I think it was two hours and uh, 24 minutes start to finish for a game. And for the NBA fans, kind of go, it doesn't sound too bad. Remember, we play eight minutes less of basketball than you. Factor that in. And we typically have, when you account for the commercial break, slightly shorter half times, even though on paper I think they're the same. Uh, and you start going, what? Yeah, we've had that. We've had that happen far too often. It's, and even, oh, God, it's like that was one game we were discussing uh, in opening week. Uh, having with Joven to this week in their game as well. I know in Euro Cup, it's happening in so many different ways, so many different levels. We're just seeing games of basketball take forever. And the replay system is the core issue here. It's uh, essentially, it, it's become a, too much of a crutch. And I'm a techie. Like, I've spent t uh, two decades as a technology journalist. And, um, yeah, I normally am for the advancement of technology and how it can help life. But also, as a technology journalist with that much experience, I have seen that sometimes the tech is running too fast for the humans, or the humans are running too fast for what they think the tech can do. Basically, they're not at the same level, and that leads to all sorts of messes. Um, you know, there's lots of huge ones with geopolitical implications there, but also just some basic daily life ones. But the one here is that we decided we're going to use instant replay more. Brilliant. Great. Unfortunately, we as humans are not able to, uh, to uh, you know, get what we need out of it just yet. As in, yes, instant replay does happen. We can slow it right down, but it doesn't happen fast enough. And we've got lots of conferences all the time. And in an effort to change it up, uh, they brought in coaches' challenges this year. The theory being, well, last year, actually, they brought them in, but we start to feel the real, real impact this year. The theory being, obviously, with all the various adjustments, that it would I mean there'd be fewer uses of the monitor because more often than not, it would be if a coach challenged, they'd go to the monitor. Yeah, no. Uh, like... Let's just lay this out. When should the replay be used if we're assuming replay isn't going away and it's not going away? For my money, either when a coach has made a challenge or in the final two minutes of the half. Not even the quarters. First and second, first and third quarter, whatever. I understand the referees using their discretion then because they're at key points in the game, so to speak. But um, we're seeing it become a crutch. And I think a lot of that is not down to the quality of officials. It is down to the instructions of the officials, as in they are not being instructed to stick with their own due diligence enough, with their own views enough. And it's just frustrating. Now, I see a lot of people complain about the quality, quality of referees. Here's the thing. We're seeing it at all levels. And there isn't that big a change in dramatic performance of referees from one season to the next. And there has been a dramatic impact in how slow games are from one season to the next. So putting it on the on the... You know, zebras, or none of them really wear black and white anymore, but on the people on the floor. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not buying that it being just them. Now, that said, if we still had Luigi Malamonica out there, he'd be kicking some ass and taking some names. But we don't. 
but we miss you, Luigi. I didn't. I knew we'd miss him, but I didn't. I think I'd be coming up in a video ranting about this. Uh, but uh, yeah, and it's like you know, the referees need to be empowered more to trust their own discretion for the benefit of the game, uh, for the benefit of the flow of the game. Because it's not so much a, we're letting perfect be the enemy of good here. Like we're so obsessed with getting the right decision all the time that we're missing the right decision really for the broadest of the time which is in making sure there's an actual basketball game that flows and what we're getting is this stuttery stop start mess which is just horrible and so it's awful we should be annoyed because it's become a lot less fun and i watch a lot of basketball i am feeling less fun when i watch basketball right now and this is reminding me of what it's like when I have to watch an NBA game live. Because normally, like a lot of people on this side of the Atlantic, I'll watch an NBA game in the condensed 40-minute version the morning after on League Pass. And I miss realizing just how long games go in the NBA because of the ferocious amount of stoppages. In Europe, we didn't have to worry about that. We'd even made rules a few years back, adjusting when timeouts were in the likes, to speed up games. And it was great. And now we've slowed them down again. It's like we've regressed uh, when technology is meant to help us progress. Uh, and that's not a good thing. So, yeah, uh, there's another problem. It's not just actually about the length of the game. I was, you know, before last night watching Real Madrid and Panathinaikos, was thinking the core issue here is how long the game is. But it's not. like, And we saw with Barcelona and Monaco do the night as well where they had a review with the game basically over with only a couple of seconds left for no reason, even though it was very one-sided. And it's that it's disrupting flow. Like, the Real and Panathinaikos game, when it actually came to, you know, raw runtime, was fine. That was what caught me out. And it's like, hang on a second, because I've hated watching this, and it wasn't from prejudice, because I went in really hyped for this game. Like, I was thinking, this is going to be so much fun. The other half was over for the second half. She was enjoying it, even though it was a bit one-sided for the large part. And I kept on getting more and more frustrated because stoppage, stoppage, stoppage. We are stopping the clock too often that even if a game stays running to a very nice overall runtime, the flow of the game, the actual, you know, the, the basketball, while we're watching basketball, has gone down. And it leads to a lower quality of basketball because, you know, all sports... They rely on flow, and the more stops and starts you have, the less chance a game can truly flow in terms of both the quality of the play on the court and the engagement with us as viewers of that sport. And that's why I'm really concerned, because if it was just run time, it would be horrible, very, very horrible, but it would be manageable. It's not just run time. It's... Um, <sighs> It's the experience, and that's that's what's concerning me because we want people to enjoy this sport, especially as we get more people coming in to watch it. Uh, and you know, drama's a key part of that. And when you stop the drama that often, you're 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 hurting the sport. You're making it harder. So, um, um, what do we do? The first thing we do is think and stop. Amusingly, because stopping is the biggest annoyance here. And that is, we analyze the problem, as in we get the people at the top of basketball in FIBA, in EuroLeague, in all the other national governing bodies as well, and work out what is at the heart of the flow disruption and at the heart of these games running too long. Then you work out what can be done to fix that. Now, the thing that's jumping out to me as the eyeball test is, you tell refs to not use the monitor outside of the final two minutes unless, one, it's a coach's challenge, or two, it is so egregious an incident, like we're talking, you know, a, a brawl on the court, which requires them to actually analyze who did what. Trust your gut, trust your judgment. Like there are sports where, you know, replay is very useful. Like I'm a commentator on volleyball, as some of you know, and they that sport's almost perfectly designed for replay because the speed at which it can get a decision is actually brilliant, almost because of the way incidents happen in volleyball, as in, the ball has to be in a certain place or touch a certain thing or the player has to touch a certain thing. There's like three or four obvious events and they're very obvious events. And because, of course, it's not like everybody's going back and forth. Volleyball teams are on opposite sides of a single net. It makes it more designed to speedy use of technology. And that's the other thing. We've got to ask the questions about 
why are we using the technology? Is it just because it's there or is it because it can add a benefit? So look at what the limitations are right now and maybe curl back even further on what it's allowed to do until we are confident, and I mean extremely confident, it can do more. Uh, and also, not just that the technology can do more, but that we as humans are capable of interacting it to a sufficient degree because the referee is having to go back to that, that angle, that angle, back to that, that angle. You know, it's, it's really annoying. It's like no one enjoys that. The refs don't enjoy it. The players don't enjoy it. And we definitely don't enjoy it as basketball fans. Like, we don't. And yeah, uh, so, like, let's actually have a talk about why we're using the tech. And again, for the most part, technology in basketball has been a huge boost. Like, you see the little vests the players wear. That's really good for monitoring their health and in terms of their, you know, bio performance and all that and can help long-term with data and also even with in-game decisions. That's great. There's lots of ways tech has made the sport better in terms of view angles, in terms of ways you project stuff. Simple stuff like the bug you see for the score has gotten smoother over the years because of advancements in design around technology that supports it. I am a pro-tech guy is what I'm trying to get across here. Uh, but I'm also pro-tech enough to know that just because it's a shiny new bauble doesn't mean it's a useful new bauble or bauble that you really want to use. So replay, we need to think about why we're using it. And we have to get back to that why and what that's being weighed up against. And like, I'm going to go to Irish game this weekend and I know it's not going to run all that long because the referees don't have monitors. Uh, they will for the internationals later in, in November, uh, which I'll be working on, but uh, they won't have monitors for this game. And I know that the game is going to go along at a reasonably good clip entirely because of that. Now, could monitors be used in a way that doesn't actually really interrupt the game? Probably. I think that's not actually that far away. But right now, and certainly for the next season or two, we're not at that stage. And we need to work out how we need to develop the replay tech, essentially, so that you know it's ideal for the end user, which more often than not is the official, and you know that it actually delivers the fan experience you want. So that's, that's the rant. Uh, sorry there were so few videos this week, by the way. Um, basically, this week, with my other work has been a bit crazy because there's a couple of changes in very boring admin stuff, which meant I had to do two weeks' worth of my non-basketball stuff in one week, uh, which obviously has impacted my ability to do all this content for all of you lovely people. But I really appreciate the support. I really appreciate your patience. Uh, we should be back to normal next week. The Monday video might still be on Tuesday. Uh, we'll have to see about that, purely because of the way things are shaking out. And uh, that we may be switching to Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, instead of being Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We'll see how that goes. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll play it by ear. Keep an eye out Monday, just in case I put one up then. But it might be Tuesday. You know yourself. But listen, thanks so much for your support. It really does mean a lot. If you haven't already, please subscribe. But until next time, I will see you soon.